welcome, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Biz Chat with Michelle Andrushek. And I have a special guest today because you in my WOW community asked me to talk about the power of collaborations and how you build your business on collaborations. So what did I do? I reached out to my best collaborator. I've, co I've collaborated with this wonderful, amazing woman multiple times over many years, successfully showcasing each other on our own stages. And I reached out to her and said, you know what? The community wants to hear about how to build your business based on collaborations. We're, you know, we're so anti-competition, right? Brenda is like, there's no competition. Together, we really are stronger. So let's collaborate to add more value. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michelle Andrushek. I am the business mastery mentor of WOW Women in Business. And I am here to give you golden nuggets to build your business. And we place these videos on YouTube as well as in the Facebook group. Find us on Facebook and join the group. So you can have coffee with us. So if you're having coffee with us this morning, because I'm broadcasting directly to Facebook from Zoom, I can't see the comments, although I see Kim is here and Anne is here, so I can see the comments on my other screen. Please, 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 I want to hear that you're here, whether you're watching the replay or whether you're watching live. Say good morning, say hello, you know, add some little go-go juice to your coffee cup. Yes. So, Brenda, you are an amazing collaborator. And so thank you for coming online with me today to collaborate as we talk about collaborations. Would you I share love collaborations? Right? Would you share a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm so happy to be here talking about this topic because. I've collaborated for so many years, and believe me, it's worth it. My name is Brenda Colossa, and my passion is helping other entrepreneurs and business leaders to create a more joyful and fulfilling business, basically. I specialize in personal development and peak performance strategies, um, and as a Kaizen-based success coach for entrepreneurs and leaders, I help my clients um, to focus more on the journey versus the overwhelming outcome, right? That journey is so important. Um, I'm also a visual brand expert. So I have, I've had my graphic design company for over 27 years. You started and, when you were 12, it's okay. Right, right? and so um, I help my clients elevate their brand and I also love mentoring DIYers. Um, yeah, so I've been collaborating. You are one of my favorite collaborators and I love, I love it whenever we can share the stage, whether it's virtual or, you know, uh, person to person, love it all. Yeah, we've done so many programs together from, you know, our Rural Alberta Business Center think tank days to um, working on really large conferences and events together mm -hmm. and even, you know, referring each other to prospective clients and like I said, get, getting on other people's stages. It's one of the things that I teach in my credibility to profitability program, how to build your own stage, which is great, but better yet, how to collaborate to get on somebody else's stage, because that is so powerful. So I know that you presented once upon a time on the power of collaborations at an, at an in-person WOW event. I did. And I want to pick your brain of how have you built your business by collaborating with others? And, and how do you choose the perfect collaborator? You know what? For me, it starts with networking. It starts with um, being able to connect with the right people. Um, but before you know the right people, I mean, how do you know? You have to get yourself out there and be visible, right? Yeah. And whether it's even, you know... Even during the past year and a half, we, we haven't been able to do a lot of in-person networking. So I've been busy behind the scenes in LinkedIn, um, Instagram. I'm, I'm trying. I'm really trying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on Alignable. I, you know, I'm 
I'm, I'm on Clubhouse. I'm, of course, you can always catch me on Facebook. Facebook is my is my hangout kind of right. thing, but it's my, it's my right? place. But I think you have to be visible. That's the key. And um, it, when you can start to connect with various people, something's going to click. And you're going to think to yourself, that's the person I want to collaborate with. Um, I run a, a clubhouse room every Monday. Um, our room's called Hello Monday, Let's Do This. And I run it with Terry Watkins. And we met on, an, on a, a networking um, collaboration, uh, like a networking thing. And it was online and we just connected. We were in one of these rooms and we thought, you know, and we got on each other's, um, onto each other's email list. And the more I heard from her, the more she heard from me. We just wanted to do something together. And so we started this room and that's a collaboration, right? A meeting oh, of the wow. minds, I guess. And I I've love- done many with you as well. And I think Brenda, for me, when I'm collaborating with you and others, that no like, and trust factor has to be really, really high. Like, again, uh, you know, getting getting yourself out there, being visible, networking, having those conversations, being known, being trusted. I know that I've done some great collaborations with Kim Free as well. She's watching today. Uh And just getting to know each other and following your gut is, is this the right person that I want to engage in my brand and add value and can I engage in their brand and add value that's the whole point about the adding value but also being really um aware that when you bring that person in like I'm bringing you in today and like you bring me into your mastermind for example to speak I have the potential to impact your brand you have the potential to impact my brand. So it's you have to be really, really careful who you're collaborating with because that person can elevate your brand yeah. really, really well. Yeah. Or if things go awry, and we're going to talk about our collaboration success and I'm going to share a couple of fails that I've experienced. Um, you have to be really careful. Like I have learned possibly the hard way um that not all collaborations are are beautiful no they're not and and you know when they go right um collaborations can be magical they you know they increase your buying power they build a larger customer pot they attract more people they build morale they build our skill set right insight perspective all that stuff and you can actually have a lot of fun, especially when it's a win-win between um, the collaborators. Absolutely. So there are many forms of collaborations, ladies. Watching live or watching the replay, don't forget, um, put in the comments whether you're live or in the replay, say hello and or hashtag replay. And if you've collaborated with somebody, let us know because we want to learn as a community together. If you've collaborated, give us an example of what your collaboration looked like. Was it a success? Was it not? What did you learn? How did you grow? We want to hear from you as well, because this is, I want to really make this a community conversation. So collaborations could be just like Brenda and I are collaborating today in this joint conversation. I'm saying, hey, Brenda, come step on the wow stage and speak with me. Or Brenda can say, hey, Michelle, I have this mastermind group. I'd like you to teach one of the segments. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Or funny enough, I'm just playing on Clubhouse. I'm totally a Clubhouse newbie. In fact, on Monday, I joined Brenda for her Clubhouse group, and she brought me up on stage to speak. And it was like instant collaboration. It was wonderful. But there are also collaborations that I've had with people that we offer package services together. So maybe like Brenda, Brenda is a web designer. She might collaborate and bring bring on a collaborator in the copywriting area or the photography area, or even another coach in another area of specialty with her coaching practice. Same with me, all my mentors. If you have been on the WOW website, wowwomeninbusiness.com and checked out the plethora of mentors that are 
on the website to help you. Brenda's one of them, Kim Free's another one. We've got a bookkeeping mentor, an accountant mentor, web design mentor, um, a copywriting mentor, social media mentor, all of those, that's collaboration saying, hey, let's build a, a stable of mentors to help each, each other and help the community at large as well. That's another sample of a collaboration. And before we went online, Brenda had another uh, couple of ideas of what collaborations you can be looking for. Um, you were telling me about um, almost like an affiliate marketing type of collaboration that you have with other organizations, Brenda. Yeah, it's called G, uh, JV, so joint ventures. So when you're in a joint venture with somebody, um, especially in the speaking world or if you're putting on programs, um, you joint venture with one another and then you are promoting not only their pay programs, but their freebies as well. And they keep track of all that. And there's, there's usually a kickback um, if one of your uh, links, I'll call it an affiliate link, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ends up signing up for their packages or whatever, you get a kickback for that. So it's a win-win, especially if you really buy into what it is they're doing, right? There has to be that synergy. And uh, every, I guess, twice a year, there is um, a challenge. I think it's like a three-day challenge on Facebook called Collaboration. And there's thousands of people within that challenge. And every day, you get to pitch yourself. You get to go on, get to know what other people are doing, what programs they're offering, and you get to pitch your own as well. And then people are reaching out, messaging you left, right, and center. Hey, I want a part of that. Hey, I want to I wanna JV with you. Hey, can we get to know each other better? It's a really exciting time. It's an exhausting time. But you get to know a lot of people in a very short amount of time. Oh, I love that. Check out one of those challenges on Facebook if you can. I see that Buddy's collaborating with us today. You saw the tail walking behind me. <laughs> as he decided to come in and join us and collaborate on the conversation too. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so you can see like the little tail going on behind me. So buddy <laughs> said hello, everybody. He's just now resided on the floor for his right. morning. Yeah, so, so I just want to, and maybe you're going to talk about this too, Michelle, but I want to, can we talk about the perfect partnership, what that looks yeah. like? I yeah. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, so... For me, it's somebody that might have a different specialty than what I do. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that has a similar target audience or avatar and one that brings different strengths to the table. I mean, I don't want to partner with a, a carbon copy of myself. I want to partner with somebody like you who has different skills than I do. Somebody like this person who, you know, has the same target market, but it, but skills that support mine as well. And I think that's the key is that you're looking for people that match your own target market and your own skill set really well. And at the end of the day, you want to learn. You want to learn yourself, right? Whether it's through um, how to do something better or you want to learn um, what, what your, your partners are offering too, your collaborators. So for me, um, that's what I look for when I'm partnering with people. Yeah, absolutely. And there are so many levels of collaboration, yeah. whether it be speaking collaborations or whether you are producing a product or service together. And that could be like Kim Free and I had a collaboration where she brought all her social media training skills and I brought my business strategy skills together for the system that we called the what do we call it? The business growth system for busy entrepreneurs, where we really focused on strategy and social media and marketing and, and, and built that system together and worked together, did strategy days for clients together. And that was great because it was her skill set is in social media so much more than mine. And then I added my strategic skill set to the business building portion of it. And it was a perfect collaboration, but I've found, and I've had a few collaborations, like I said, that are amazing and others that are like 
epic disappointments and fails. One of the things I learned is that it doesn't matter how much this person is your best friend that you're collaborating with or your new best friend and you know, like, and trust them and, you know, you, you know, hang out together, you have lunch together, you, you love talking together, just like Brenda and I went kayaking on the weekend together, you know, we hang out as friends too, is that having your collaboration defined on paper uh-huh. is so, so important. And I call that an MOU or Memorandum of Understanding. It's not a contract that would stand up in a court of law, but what it does is it outlines everything that each collaborator is committing to do and the results that each collaborator is looking for and also outlines while you're still friends. This is important because sometimes when you mix friendship and business, sometimes the friendship goes awry, something happens, And then poof, you've lost a friend and your collaboration's fallen on your face. And it's damaged your brand and your reputation and all those things. But thinking about developers sitting down at the very beginning, especially if you're doing something big, like you're producing a, a product or service together or big conferences like you and I have done, It's the sitting down and taking the time to say, okay, we need to to work on a memorandum of understanding. You know, if there's money involved, how will the money be split? If there's affiliate links back and forth or referrals back and forth, how will you track the success of the collaboration? You base it on the memorandum of understanding. And like I said, really importantly, that memorandum of understanding needs to outline what happens if one of the collaborators want to exit? And how much time does that collaborator who wants to exit give to the other collaborator? Because I know we've had a situation, Brenda, where you and I were working on a project and there was three of us to begin with and really two of us at the end where we run on this fantastic collaborator and life just went awry for her. And she went MIA for a while. And, but we, but we withheld what, you know, we did our best with what we could do. But there was still some brand damage. There was still some personal damage. There was still some disappointment. Um, and, but you know what, Michelle? Sometimes it happens. We pulled it off. Though. Oh, we totally did. We yeah, pulled high it five. off and yeah. it was an unbelievable day for so many people. So I am so proud of what we did together. Like that's still one of my highlights, even with all that turmoil and, you know, chaos that happened throughout, it's still one of the highlights. And I'm, it's still something that I'm so proud of. I I am too. Absolutely. The fact that we did it and without a skill set that we thought we would have. So that's amazing. So Brenda, what are some of your collaborative success stories and how has it helped you build your business? Yeah, so I've had a lot of collaborations that have ended up getting me on stage. Mm-hmm. So you'll see a lot of um, summits coming through Facebook, uh, especially women's summits where, you know, the tickets are either free or they're like 20 bucks, something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, Well, if I can get my hands into one of those summits, which I've done, I've done probably five of them um, and speak on stage. That's a great collaboration for me because they not only allow me to speak about what I'm passionate about, but they promote me as well for free. And, and, and once in a while, I'll have to pay for that. That Once in a while, they charge their speakers. But a lot of times, it's for free just to get knowledge on stage. And so that's been a great collaborative um, exercise for me over the past few years, especially since I started coaching. Um, I remember doing a lot of collaborations with photographers back in the day. 
So being a graphic designer, um, we'd collaborate together and put together a package, a commercial package where the photographer would take commercial shots and I would, uh, I would design the, the presentation folder or the brochure or something like that. And we would both package it up and send it out to our network. And that was really successful for, you know, for the times that I did that. Um, sometimes there's seasonal collaborations. So you'll find that just for Christmas, you wanted to, you want to collaborate with certain people, right? It doesn't have to be a long period of time. It doesn't have to be, you know, each and every year or each and every month or whatever. You can just do it for Easter, for Valentine's Day, right? A photographer with somebody who sells chocolates with somebody who's, you know, got a dating app. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. But there's lots of different ways to collaborate. And um, I'm always looking for ways to collaborate. So if you think that we can work together, anybody watching out there, talk to me. Let's talk. Absolutely. So for the ladies who are watching, and thank you for staying with us for Coffee Chat. I want to hear, like, Kim's, Kim's just wrote a comment saying that she was so pleased that she and I had a memorandum of understanding. It allowed us to wrap up the collaboration without hurt feelings. Yeah. It was like, yeah, this is great. And now we're, st we're still the best of friends. And it's, it's wonderful. So when you, um, yes, get that MOU, because, you know, I recently was really, really excited about a potential collaborator that was on the other side of the country. So excited that I wrote a proposal and sent the proposal and couldn't sleep at night. I was so excited and like, oh, this is going to be it, the big one. And then all of a sudden the proposal was sent and the collaborator went into a communication vacuum. And I'm going, oh, Michelle, you didn't follow your own rule. The memorandum of understanding should have been sent. And sometimes when you're sending, you know, important business building information, you might even want a um, confidentiality agreement or a non-compete agreement. And so that proposal was sent and poof, disappeared. Oof. Collaboration gone. I have a great. Sometimes we sometimes we just want to share too much. Right, I was at the so beginning, excited, right? And I wanted to share, and I learned to follow my own rules and go. Okay, lesson learned, Michelle. I won't have to learn that again. And now I also have a great framework for a couple of new programs for Wow that I could do myself. There you go. Or find another collaborator to do it with me. So one thing I do, Brenda, is like you said, especially when I develop the mentors, the WOW Mentors program, is I looked at my own skill sets because we, we need that Mufasa moment. Remember who you are. Look at the skill set you bring to the table and stand in strengths with that. But also look at the gaps. Look at the gaps. You know, I don't have the Kaizen mindset, small step expertise you have. I don't have the social media expertise or the copywriting expertise that Kim does or Anita does or the health coaching expertise that Carmen does and say, okay, you know what? The, what does the community need? Or what are my potential MVCs, most valuable clients need? And how can I fill the gaps? And bring in the amazing people so together we can provide such a stronger product and add power to your brand. Like bringing those, those mentors on add pow added power to WOW. Yeah. Because no other organization in the whole wide world for women in business has that kind of program. And so... It's identifying your gaps and how can you fill it to develop a better product or service for your customer? Or like we said, getting on each other's stages. And that's what I teach in the credibility to profitability program. It says one big thing. If your collaborator is like Brenda, 
who has an amazing following of her own, fantastic credibility, amazing reputation in her industry, and knows a lot of people. If you're able to be on Brenda's stage, for example, like I've had the honor to be, or be on a collaborative stage that has a really great credibility, reputation, and audience, like Tony Robbins, call me. I want to collaborate. <laughs> right? Me. Call me, maybe. So when you when you're looking at potential collaborators, also what value are you bringing to that collaborator themselves? You know, think yes, you want to bring value to their audience, but what collaborator, what value can you provide the collaborator themselves like can you bring more of an audience can you bring reputation can you bring credibility and when you sit on somebody else's stage like Brenda is sitting on mine today Brenda already comes with credibility it like like I say in my credibility to profitability program because I invited Brenda my credibility has transferred to her because I trust her. Trust is transferable. And if you can get into those positions where you're showcasing yourself on somebody else's stage, the audience trusts the person who owns the stage. So therefore they trust the people that they put on the stage. And it just elevates your credibility. And I always say that you have to build trust before you get transactions. So it's just another way to increase that elevation of trust with the potential for transactions. Anyway, I'm going to sip my coffee and stop talking. And so I, I want to hear about, you know, the other side of collaborations. I shared my side, a couple of fails. And what I learned is, is there any collaboration that went awry for you? And what did you learn? Um, other than the one we spoke about, um, Really, the ones that didn't work out as well as I wanted them to, a lot of that was my own fault. Mm -hmm. I didn't cross my T's and dot my I's like I should have. Um, so you learn from that, yeah. right? But it's it's a matter of moving forward, right? To keep moving forward. Do we, do we have time for a story? Yes, we do. We've got so, a little over time, but you know what? I talk too much, so bring it on. I love this story, this analogy, because it's a little bit like shooting a moose. Oh, I've never right? shot a moose. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> I'll explain. So Scott, Steve, and John uh, were in Alaska. They chartered a float plane to fly back to this lake that they visited last year, okay? So they land on the lake and the pilot taxis up to the point and lets the men out. They unload their gear and the pilot announces that he'll be back in three days. So three days later, the pilot lands on the lake and taxis up to the point and the men load their gear and then strap one moose onto the pontoons. The pilot then says, okay, that's it, let's go. One of the men says, what do you mean let's go? We have two more moose to load. Well, the men and the pilot get into a huge conversation about the carrying capacity of the plane and the temperature and the lift of the air and, you know, blah, 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 the length of the lake and all that stuff. Finally, one of the men says, look, last year we took off from this same lake with the same kind of aircraft, the same wind and weather conditions, the same three men, the same gear and three moose the only difference between this year and last year is the pilot so they continue to argue and finally persuade the pilot to do it so they load the other two moose onto the plane and strap them down so the plane starts and it struggles back and forth it's got a lot of load on it through the mud the engine streaking finally it takes off but the pontoons hit the top of the branches on the trees and it ends up going end over end over end and the men go flying. Oh no, well at least the moose didn't go flying, the men right. go flying. The gear goes flying, the moose go flying and after a few moments, one of the men comes to and he looks around and he says, Scott, Steve, where are you? 
And after a moment, from the other side, he hears John. Hey, guys, where are we? And John says, looks like about 50 feet farther than when we were last year. <laughs> so, so the reason I'm saying this is that change and improvement is often going 50 feet further than where you were, mm -hmm. right? One step ahead of the next. You may not go leaps and bounds or lakes, but you may go 50 feet further. And to me, that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. One small step at a time as you teach in your Kaizen methodology, which is awesome. Brenda, that's a wonderful way to wrap up this week's episode of Coffee and Biz Chat. Thank you so much for collaborating with me in a conversation about collaborations. And ladies, we want to hear from you watching this live or watching the replay. Have you collaborated with somebody? What, what were the steps that you identified in the collaboration? You know, was it an epic success or was it that you just got 50 feet further than you did last year? And uh, we want to hear from you. So definitely, you know, let's have a conversation about collaboration in the comments below. And like I said, if you want to connect with Brenda, she'll pop her information in the comments below as well. And I will share a link to uh, the program that I teach you how to collaborate and get on other people's stage stages build that know like and trust so important not just for your customers or clients but also know like and trust for your collaborators as well in my credibility to profitability program so brenda again thank you i always enjoy spending time collaborating with you and for all of you on the call We'll see you next Thursday for Coffee and Biz Chat. If you have a suggestion for a topic that you'd like me to talk about or a special guest you'd like me to invite to Coffee and, Coffee and Biz Chat, put it in the comments because that is how we got talking about collaborations today. Because last week someone said, hey, would you talk about collaborations? Of course I will. Perfect. So, perfect. so put your suggestions for... Uh, themes or subjects you'd like us to discuss as we help you build your business, increase your joy, productivity, and profits. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye Thanks, for now. Guys. Thank you, Michelle.